Initiating launch sequence. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Family Church. It's good to see you. We've got some new people on the team this week, Marion and Susan. I'll be introducing them later. Today's theme is about how unique each one of us is and how special. Um, you may not feel it, especially with the lockdown, when you can't play with people, talk to people, hug them, do anything good. But in fact, you are the only person like you in the whole world or who's ever been in the whole world so in fact you're one in a million Morton you're one in a million wow no you're better than that you one in a billion that's a million million wow no you're better than that you're one in a trillion yes I know a trillion is a lot isn't it in fact you're even better than that because you're utterly unique. There's only one of you ever. So we're going to start by singing a song about that. And in the chorus, every second line is, you're more than that. So I would like you to shout it out every second line. You're going to see it come up and uh, we'll learn it now. And then at the end, we'll sing it to one another. Is that okay? Okay, let's go. I'm one in a million. I'm one in a billion. I'm one in a trillion. I'm one in a million. I'm one in a billion. I'm one in a trillion. Did you know that when God made you, He had a special plan that there would only ever be the one? And you know that God loves you so very, very much, and He's really, really pleased with what He's done. You're quite unique. I'm one in a million. You're more than that. I'm one in a million. You're more than that. I'm one in a million. You're more than that. In fact, you're quite unique. Did you know that when God made you, He had a special plan that there would only ever be the one? And you know that God loves you so very, very much, and He's really, really pleased with what He's done. I'm one in a million. You're more than that. I'm one in a billion. You're more than that. I'm one in a trillion. You're more than that. In fact, you're quite unique. I'm one in a million. You're more than that. I'm one in a billion. You're more than that. I'm one in a trillion. You're more So now it's time to get physical with Morton and uh, we have to do the introductions. So here we go. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I got to move it, move it, move it. So I'm special because I can hang by my tail and swing from the branches. I can do almost anything. Oh, Morton. 
Come back. Come on, Martin. You just think you can do all sorts of clever things. I wonder what you can do. Come back, Martin. Are you okay? Good, good. Well, what can you do? Can you um, put your feet behind your head? Can you stand on one leg, rub your tummy and pat your head at the same time? I can't either. I wonder if you could make special noises. Could you um, bark like a dog? Woof, woof. <laughs> could you make a sound like a chicken? Could you cough like a rabbit? <coughs> Only kidding, rabbits don't cough. Never mind though. Maybe you should do a monkey noise. <laughs> Very good, Morton. What do you think you could do? Give it a go now, make a noise. Very good. Of course, being special isn't always easy, is it, Morton? It can get you into trouble because people don't like you being special. They prefer everybody to be dead normal and boring, which is no fun at all. Our story today is about someone very special and his being special got a lot of people really annoyed. In fact, some people I know still find this person really, really annoying. Now, I'd like you to really concentrate on this story because we're going to do a quiz on it afterwards. So watch carefully. God's story, Joseph. So part of God's story is about a guy named Joseph, and it begins like this. Once there was a guy named Joseph who had ten older brothers and one younger one. When Joe was a boy, he was his dad's favorite. In fact, his dad liked him so much better than his brothers that he gave Joe a special gift to prove it. You can imagine this made his brothers jealous. And Joe only made things worse. He told his brothers about dreams he had where he was ruling over them. Well, this made Joe's brothers furious. One day they were working and saw Joe coming. They said, here comes that dreamer. They threw Joe into a dark pit. They might have left him there forever, but they met some men traveling from Egypt and sold Joe to them as a servant instead. They thought that was slightly nicer than leaving him in a pit. Then they went home and told their father Joe had been killed by a wild animal. This broke their dad's heart. Kids, these brothers were really bad news. Selling a sibling is never a good idea, ever. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joe. When Joe was a servant, he worked for a really important rich guy named Potiphar. And Potiphar liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of the whole house. Joe was happy until one day he was blamed for something he didn't do, and Potiphar sent him straight to jail. Well, God was still with Joe, even in prison. The guard decided he liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of all the other prisoners. Then God gave Joe special knowledge about dreams. When two prisoners had dreams, Joe knew what they meant, so he told them. Two years later, Egypt's ruler called Pharaoh had a dream, and nobody knew what it meant. But by now, one of the two prisoners Joe had helped was out of jail and working for Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh about Joe, and God helped Joe figure out what Pharaoh's dream meant. But Pharaoh's dream was really more of a nightmare. It meant that everybody in Egypt would have food for seven years, then be hungry for seven years. Joe told Pharaoh the only way to survive was to store food during the seven good years. Well, Pharaoh thought Joe's idea was brilliant. He put him in charge. During the seven hungry years, nobody could eat without getting food from Joe. He was like a human vending machine. Well, remember how Joe had 11 brothers? Like everybody else, they had to get food from Joe. And when they came, they didn't even recognize their brother. But Joe knew who they were. He secretly tested them to see if they changed. After all, they did throw him in a pit and sell him. 
Finally, he couldn't hide who he was from his brothers anymore. He told everyone to leave the room because he was about to cry. After sobbing for a few minutes, he told them, I'm your brother Joseph. I'm the one you sold. The brothers couldn't believe it. They had hurt Joe, but God had taken care of him during the good times and the bad. Even with everything they had done to Joe, he forgave them because he was willing to follow God, even when it was hard. Joe told them, you plan to harm me, but God planned it for good. And God used Joe to save many lives, including the family that was part of God's special rescue plan. And that's the story of Joseph. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Joe was his dad's favorite. His brother sold him. Potiphar put Joe in charge. Joe was sent to jail. The guard put Joe in charge. Pharaoh had a bad dream. Joe told him what it meant. Pharaoh put Joe in charge. Joe's brothers had to come to him for food. Joe forgave them. This was part of God's rescue plan. And that's a part of God's story. Now keep thinking. Don't forget anything you've just seen, because here comes Susan with the quiz. Hello, I hope you enjoyed that story about Joseph. Now we've got a little quiz for you to see what you remember. We've got some questions for the kids and for the grown-ups. You can do whichever you can remember. See how we go. Question one. For kids, how many brothers did Joseph have? For grown-ups, how many younger brothers did Joseph have? Okay, move on to question two. For the kids, what was the special gift Joseph's father gave to Joseph? For the grown-ups, how did Joseph make his brothers mad? Question three, for the kids, where did the brothers put Joseph? For the grown-ups, where had the men come from who Joseph was sold to? You have to think about that one. It was quite early on in the story. Question four, for the kids, what did the brothers say to their father had happened to Joseph? For the grown-ups, who did Joseph become a servant to? Okay. Question five. For the kids, who helped Joseph understand Pharaoh's dreams? And for the grown-ups, what was in Pharaoh's dream to show the plenty and famine? How was it shown? Question six, for the kids, how many hungry years were there? And for the grown-ups, who would take care of Joseph in both the good and bad times? Okay, are we ready for the answers to see how you did? Here we go. Question one, how many brothers did Joseph have? Eleven. And how many younger brothers did Joseph have? One. And the special gift that was given to Joseph from his father was a multicoloured coat or just coat, if you've got that. And how did Joseph make his brothers mad? He said in his dreams that he ruled over them. It's meaning he was better than them. For the kids, where did Joseph's brothers put Joseph? In a pit. They threw him in a pit. And for Bums, where had the men come from who Joseph was sold to? And that was Egypt. Quite a hard one, that one, if you had listened carefully. Question four. What did the brothers say to the father that happened to Joseph? They said he was killed by a wild animal. And the man that Joseph was sold to as a servant was Potiphar. It doesn't matter if you haven't spelt it right, but if you've got the idea of it, that's fine. But it's part of her. Question five, the answer, who helped Joseph understand Pharaoh's dreams? God. Yes, it was God. And for the grown-ups, 
what signified this plenty in the famine were cows. There was one fat cow and one thin cow. So from there. And question six, how many hungry years were there? Seven. And who had taken care of Joseph in both the good and the bad times? Well, God, of course, as he's always there for us. Well, I hope you did good on those questions and enjoyed the story. Now time to continue with a bit more of our fun. How did you do with the quiz? I hope you made a good show of it. Morton found it so difficult, he's had to go for a lie down, but I'm sure it'll be better soon. I thought whilst he's quiet, we should have a think about the people who have changed our world and just reflect on what makes them special. And the funny thing I've noticed is that almost all of them have had to cope with problems early on in their lives. And their specialness has perhaps come about as a result of coping with those problems. So have a listen and see what you think. We've seen how Joseph was special and how he got into trouble because of it. But his special abilities and gifts helped him to save thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands from starvation. Don't you think it would have been easier for him just to fit in with his brothers when he was little and act normal? I think his parents would have said, Joseph, stop showing off. Act like a normal child. Yeah, and maybe that's what our parents think about us. But can you imagine a world of normal, average, conforming, boring people? Do you know, the people that change the world are the ones who have special gifts and who let them grow. They're not the ones who hide them away. And each one of us, each one of you is like that. But let's think about some of the things we'd have lost if people had not lived out their specialness. Hans Christian Andersen and Lewis Carroll both struggled with uh, learning. Mozart, the composer, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, the painters and inventor. W.B. Yeats, the poet. Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Alan Turing. They all had either mental or learning issues that caused them difficulty. And m most of them carried on regardless. If they hadn't, we'd have lost some amazing stories, poems, art and music, some incredible inventions. Without Steve Jobs, there'd be no Apple computers. Without Bill Gates, there'd be no Microsoft. Without Alan Turing, there'd probably be no computers anyway. And without the inventors like Isaac Newton, we'd have lost centuries of scientific discovery. It's been said that the biggest names you can think of when you think of any particular area in terms of discovery and changing the world for us, they all had a mental health diagnosis or a learning disability or sometimes both. Each one of us has a special God-given ability. Each one of us has a unique role to play. And God tells us to stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around us, but to be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how we think. This will empower us to discern God's will as we live a beautiful life satisfying and perfect in his eyes. So stop imitating other people and start being all totally and completely who you are. And let's enjoy being who we are instead of hiding. I wonder if you'd join me in saying this, please. I'm not normal, I'm special. I'm not average, I'm unique. I'm not conforming, 
I'm different. I'm not like all the rest. I'm outstanding. Anyway, we've learned a lot about how special we are. And here's Marion with something you can make that will remind you through the days ahead just how special you really are. Marion, over to you. Hello everyone and welcome to today's craft activity. What you're going to need today is a sheet of paper. I've got white here but you can have any colour you like. You'll need something to draw or write with. I've got a black felt pen but you can have a pencil, a crayon, any colour you like, it's not important. And then you'll need something to print with. If you've got some poster paint that will be lovely. If you haven't you could use perhaps an ink pad like this one or you could also use your felt pen again and I'll show you how to do that later. If you want to go and find those things now you can pause the video and catch up with us again in a moment. Okay so this is what we're going to do. You have to put your hand flat down, palm side down on your piece of paper, take your pen felt pen, your pencil, whatever you've got to draw with, and draw around the outside of your hand. Keep your fingers apart so that you've got a lovely outline of your hand when it's finished. And there we go. Put the top back on. And I've got mine just like that. Now we're going to put our fingerprints into the hand that you've just drawn. So if you've got paint, very carefully put your fingertips into the paint. You don't need very much, it's just a little bit on each one, and then put your fingers down onto the one that's already on your paper. I'm going to use my ink pad. It's a little bit messy, but not as messy as paint. I'm going to put my fingertips into the ink not forgetting my thumb. I'm going to put them down just like that into the paper and press down a little bit. There we are. Okay. If you're going to use a felt pen, you're also a bit messy, just take the felt pen and ink across the edges at the end, very end of your fingers. If you're like me, you've ended up a little bit messy. So I'm going to take a a wipe and get the worst bit off my fingers before I do the next thing. Okay, a little bit, a little bit of a wipe, get the worst of that off. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, and if you need help from an adult or a grown up, that's fine, but what we need to do next is put your name on the piece of paper. I'm going to put mine at the bottom underneath the hand. And then across the top, we're going to do a bit more writing. Again, if you need help, that's fine. So I'm going to write my finger prints are unique just like me. There we are. And that's mine finished. If you can see that. What you might like to do now is to ask your mum or your dad or anyone in your family or a friend to write some words on your piece of paper to describe the special things they see in you. So there's plenty of space, there isn't mine, and people can write words around the outside. You then put your finished drawing up somewhere where you can see it every day. Now if you missed any of that, remember you can always rewind and watch it again. Hope you've enjoyed that and that's it for today, so see you again soon. Thank you Marion, that was great. What have we found out today? Sorry? That's right. We found out that each one of us is special, 
that each one of us is unique. There's only one of us in the whole world. And we found out that God designed us for a special purpose. And he made us just as we are for a reason. Sometimes it takes us a long time to work out what that reason is, but it's worth looking really, really hard to find out. So I think we should tell him how we feel about that. So here we go. Let's talk to God about all we've been thinking about. That's what we call praying, talking to God. So let's go. Dear God, I'm unique. In all the world, there's nobody like me. Since the beginning of time, there has never been another person like me. Nobody has my smile. Nobody has my eyes, my nose, my hair, my voice. I'm unique. Through all of eternity, no one will ever look, walk, talk, think or do like me. I'm special. I'm rare. And I'm beginning to realise that it's no accident that I'm special. I'm beginning to see that you made me special for a very special purpose. You must have a job for me that no one else can do as well as I can, because I'm unique. Thank you. Amen. We've had a lovely time with you and it's really great to see you for Family Church. It's been good to remind ourselves of how special we are, how unique. And I want you to remember that in the days ahead. No matter what other people say or think or do, you are special. You are loved by God, just as you are. We're going to finish now with our song again. And this time, first chorus would like the parents to sing I'm one in a billion, and the kids to sing, you're more than that. And then the second time through, the, kid, the kids sing, I'm one in a million, and the parents sing, you're more than that. And the third time through, we all sing it at the same time. So I'll leave you with that song, and bye-bye from us. We're back the second Sunday in February. See you then. Bye. A million. I'm one in a billion. I'm one in a trillion. I'm one in a million. I'm one in a billion. I'm one in a trillion. Did you know that when God made you? had a special plan that there would only ever be the one and you know that God loves you so very very much and he's really really pleased with what he's done I'm one in a trillion!